Welcome to Simpson United Methodist Church. Hi, I'm Janine Rembert. And I'm Rob Rembert. And we have been at Simpson United Methodist Church for the last 24 years. We've raised four kids here. And during quarantine, we've had four of the six of us have had birthdays. So now Emily is 23, living in Boise. Allie is 21, living in Pullman. Matthew is 15, and Brecken is 8. And we won't even tell you how old we are, but just know we were very, very young parents when we had these kids. I haven't had a birthday, so I'm no older to, due to quarantine. Now, just a couple of announcements. Methodists are called to do no harm. Keeping that in mind, Pastor Leslie was tasked by our bishop to form a committee to put together a plan about when and how we can continue to have church in our building and our sanctuary. Our task is big, but we must consider the safety of all congregants and our community members first and foremost. There will be more information to share with you as we work through this in the weeks ahead. Be on the lookout for an online survey that will be coming your way in the next couple of weeks. We will mail surveys out to those of you who do not have internet. We will have a time of fellowship following the service today on Zoom beginning at 11.30. The invite is in your morning email. And we would like to also take a couple minutes to congratulate our 2020 high school senior graduates and share a bit about their plans for their future. Each of the girls was presented with a new Bible and a red Simpson coffee mug. And following that, we will begin our worship. But now, a little bit from our graduates. Well, good morning, church. I'm Pastor Leslie, and we here at Simpson United Methodist Church are so happy that you have chose to worship with us today. And let us begin our time of worship here together, um, and let's pray together, okay? Hmm. We believe in you, oh God, for you have made the suffering of humanity your suffering. You have come to establish a kingdom of both the poor and the humble. God, today we sing to you because you are alive. You have saved us. And you have made us free. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's join together as Jason leads us in our opening song. And that will be immediately followed by our psalm reading for today, which is from Psalm 116. sunset's glory, amazing artistry across the evening sky. When I feel the mystery of a distant galaxy, it awes and humbles me to be loved by a God so high. What can I do?
the story of a God of mercy who shared humanity and suffered by our side of the cross they nailed you to but could not hold you now you're making all things new by the power of your risen life what can i do but thank you what can i do but give my life to you hallelujah hallelujah what can i do but praise you every day with everything i do What can I do but praise you every day with everything I do? Hallelujah, hallelujah, Today's reading comes from Psalm 116, verses 1 through 2, and then 12 through 19. I love the Lord because He hears my requests for mercy. I'll call out to Him as long as I live, because He listens closely to me. What can I give back to the Lord for all the good things He has done for me? I'll lift up the cup of salvation. I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord and the presence of all God's people. The death of the Lord's faithful is a costly loss in His eyes. Oh yes, Lord, I am definitely your servant. I am your servant and the son of your female servant. You freed me from my chains. So I'll offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you, and I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord and the presence of all God's people in the courtyards of the Lord's house, which is in the center of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. All right, kids. I wonder how good your memory is. Can you remember a lot of stuff? I mean, like a lot. Can you remember stuff from a long time ago, like last year when you were really little? Well, well, so the question I'm going to ask you is, do you ever remember asking God for help? Like when you were, maybe sometime it was when you were really scared. Most of us, not just kids, but most of us, even adults, can remember a time when we cried out to God in the middle of something really hard or scary or frightening. And God, who is so loving, responded to our fear or our hurt and kept us safe. Can you remember a time when that happened for you? And then, once it's over, we're left wondering, oh my gosh, how can I say thanks? God, how can I thank you for what you've done for me? I mean, can you remember a time 
when mom or dad or even grandma or grandpa helped you through something hard or scary? Yeah. It's a little easier to remember something like that because that happened here, right? Um, do you remember how you thanked them? Maybe you ran into their arms and gave them a great big hug as a way of saying thank you. So I want you to think, how can you give God a great big hug? Yeah, that's a little tough, isn't it? Well, I can give you a couple of hints. You can thank God by helping someone else. Maybe it's a neighbor who needs help pulling weeds in their yard. Or maybe it's mom who can't get to the very top of the car or to the bottom when she's washing the car. Or maybe it's grandma or grandpa who needs help walking one of their dogs. There's so many things that you could do. Maybe you even want to help out some with something at church. Maybe you want to help be a greeter or pass out, you know, when we're meeting again together in the church, maybe you want to help in some way that way. I want you to think of some ways that you can say thank you to God by helping someone else. You've got a lot of ideas. I know you do. And you can come up with many of these on your own. And then I want you to do it. I want you to do something like that and say, thank you, God, for what you've done for me. Because this is how you can thank God for all that God's done for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Church, would you pray with me? Oh, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was studying this week's text, a very specific song kept coming up in my head over and over and over again. It was a song that um, is sung by Matt Redman called I Will Offer Up My Life. However, it was written by a guy by the name of Willie James Williams. I love all of those first names, Willie James Williams. Anyhow, it goes like this. Jesus, what can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king, savior, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? Oh, my words cannot tell, not even in part, of the debt of love that is owed by this grateful heart. This is how I imagine that the psalmist felt after the Lord rescued him from his illness. What can I give back to the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? The psalmist here had been gravely ill. He called on the name of the Lord and was rescued. And he asks, how can I pay God back for the mercy he has shown me? Folks, like the kids, I invite you to look back at your own life. Can you remember a time or a place where God reached in and showed you mercy? Where God saved you? If you're here today, there's a pretty good chance you've experienced something like this yourself. This grace, this unearned, undeserved mercy. Verses one and two of our text today say, I love the Lord because he hears my requests for mercy. 
I'll call out to him as long as I live because he listens closely to me. There's this stuff that's left out of this reading that really should be included here, like verses three and four. He, the psalmist goes on to say, death's ropes bound me. The distress of the grave found me. I came face to face with trouble and grief. So I called on the Lord's name. Lord, please save me. I remember a time when my middle daughter, Kate, became very, very sick. It came on suddenly and we were terrified. And after visiting her regular doc, um, he obviously saw something and sent us to an ophthalmologist to have this um, dye put in her eyes so that they could do this test called a fluorescein test. And what the ophthalmologist found was something that was not right in a kid of eight years old. Um, both of her optic nerve heads had what they said appeared to look like smashed tomatoes. Usually the optic nerve is like a beautiful white line around the optic nerve in the form of like a C and a backward C. Not a full circle, just a um, almost a three quarter, like a C, almost like a almost like a full circle. And it's beautiful and very sharp and white. And hers, you couldn't see the white, it just was smashed tomato. Um, and they told us that that. Um, of course, they didn't tell us right away, but we later found out from another doctor we saw later that that's very indicative of a brain tumor because of the pressure it puts on the optic nerve head. So the blood work from our original visit had now come back and was very concerning. Um, everything was out of whack, neutrophils, basophils, lymphocytes, leukocytes, whatever they're all called. Um, so then we were then sent to see a pediatric oncologist at Mountain States Tumor Institute in Boise. That was a really frightening experience. They ended up repeating all of her blood work, took scans and an MRI. Then we were taken on the tour, as all new patients are of the facility and introduced to the entire staff that it was on that day. Um, I called it, or I thought of it, I never said it out loud, but I thought of it as the scary, scary tour. They um, took us into the chemo room. They showed us the um, radiation room, the um, patient rooms, common areas, um, snack station, and the chapel. There I was with my eight-year-old daughter who was facing this huge giant, and we couldn't even see it. She was so weak and so sick, and her headaches were so severe and debilitating. But all we could do now was wait for the results. In the meantime, back at home, in the privacy of my own room, I was on my knees. I was the psalmist. I was crying out to God, Lord, please save my child, my baby. Three days went by and finally the doctor called and asked us to come back in and repeat some blood work. Uh, the following day she called and told us that um, they had repeated this blood work because it had changed so drastically from the initial blood work that they had taken. Um, the neutrophils and basophils and lymphocytes and leukocytes and things 
had all returned back into a near normal range. This still had very little meaning for us because we still had no diagnosis. We had no idea what we were facing yet um, because we, had, we were still waiting for all of these tests to come back yet. But she did share with me, she said, your little girl has experienced nothing short of a miracle. Because what they had been looking at from those original blood tests and MRI scans and such was a blood cancer called lymphoma. It's often ac accompanied by this, what they call a pseudo or false tumor in the brain. What Kate received was a miracle. And what I received for my fervent prayers and my time on my knees was mercy. I love the Lord because he hears my requests for mercy. I'll call out to him as long as I live because he listens closely to me. Now, I also realize that for many, for many, 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 their prayers for God's healing, for God's saving, went unanswered. I mean, why would God save this one and not my child? And sadly, I'm not God. I, I can't answer that for you. Why God does what God does is only known to God. I had some friends even in church, um, faith followers that said, even went so far to say something like, maybe the original blood tests were not handled correctly, or maybe they were misread or um, reported wrong. And that's really a possibility, really is a possibility. Even so, what we faced was still met with mercy, with incredible mercy. And to share what followed, um, many of you probably don't want to be left hanging. Um, then maybe some of you do, I don't know. <laughs> My daughter Kate was then um, transferred to the care of a, or referred to the care of a neurologist. And it was later determined that she had this very rare but treatable disease called idiopathic pseudotumor cerebri, which means there's no known cause for it, idiopathic pseudotumor, which is false tumor in the brain, cerebri. A false tumor in the brain that wreaks havoc on the, broad, on the brain and body's response system. And what it did was it caused extremely high pressure in her CSF or cerebral spinal fluid, which meant she could need um, throughout the course of her life, numerous spinal taps or lumbar punctures um, to draw off small amounts of this CSF fluid to normalize the pressure. Um, and she did. She endured these lumbar punctures throughout um, many years from the time she was about eight years old until she was about 20. She hasn't had to have a lumbar puncture in over 10 years now. Hallelujah, praise God, right? <laughs> this may not have come through the direct hand of God, right? Could have, but it may not have. But I know that we were shown incredible mercy. And I know without a doubt that mercy comes from God alone. So what can I 
give back to the Lord for all the good things that he has done for me. I'll lift up the cup of salvation. I'll call on the Lord's name. I'll keep the promises I made to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Oh, yes, Lord, I am definitely your servant, whatever you call me to do. I'll offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to you, and I'll call on the Lord's name. And I'll keep the promises that I made to you, O oh Lord, in the presence of your people. The first part of that song that I shared with you at the beginning was the chorus. I will now share the verse with you and you will see why this song has not left my head. <laughs> it goes like this. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender, I must give my every part. Lord, receive this sacrifice of a broken heart. Amen. And now let us raise our voices together and sing, we bring the sacrifice of praise. sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Let us come together and pray for one another and the needs of our world. <sighs> Almighty God, you created us in your own image, all of us, each one of us. Grant us the grace to fearlessly stand up against evil and oppression that we may reverently use our freedom in the maintenance of justice to the glory of your holy name. Strong covenant God, save us from being self-centered in our own prayers and teach us to remember to pray for others. And may we be so bound up in love with those for whom we pray that we may feel their needs as acutely as our own. 
May we intercede for them with sensitivity, understanding, and imagination. Let us each lift the prayers on our own hearts. for our family and for our friends. We live to you, our community. For our nation and our world, For those who have suffered loss. For the many who need your care and comfort, O oh God. Now we lift to you all the injustices done in your name. God, we've been given the task to care for your creation as well as to care for one another. Those whose voices are muted or drowned out. God, may we carry their voice. All of these prayers we lift to you, O oh God, trusting in your care, your love and mercy. Amen. Dave Ramsey says, tithing means you're being obedient to God. So you should give without expecting anything in return because giving encourages a grateful and generous spirit and can help to steer us away from being greedy or loving money too much. Here are some ways that you can give your tithes, gifts, and offerings. Let us pray. God of creation, you are good and generous, abounding in love and mercy. We pray that you will use these gifts that we bring for the good work done in your name for your kingdom here on earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now, folks, may you receive this benediction. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord protect you. And may the face of God shine down on you. Go in peace, friends. Amen. servant, humble and meek. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak, and may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant.